So thank you everyone for coming. Um, these are the winners of the 2008 Juicy Ideas competition. Um, they've done an excellent job. They're going to show us today how they created their bike out of water bottles. And they're also going to show us the version 2.0 and how they plan to make it a reality. So what we're going to do first is show their video. So you can take a look at that and get an idea of how the process went. And then they're going to do their wonderful presentation. So here we go. For this competition, we wanted to take plastic bottles, which are one of the more abundant recyclable items we use every day, and translate that into something we felt was really important in meeting our current needs for being green. We found our answer in a bike, which not only reduces the usage of cars and therefore carbon dioxide emissions, but is an economic and eco-friendly mode of transportation. We already know there's numerous uses for plastic alone. Why can't a community be self-sustainable by reusing their recyclables for affordable community bikes? We ventured the idea and found the possibilities are what we think of them. <laughs> Working hard. I want to introduce now Ryan, Spencer, Andrew, and Justin. Yeah. 
All right, just to reiterate, we want to thank everyone for coming out and listening to what we have to say. Uh, we're from Boone, North Carolina. I don't know if that's familiar for you guys, but it's a small town in western North Carolina, uh, 15,000 or so students at our school. And we're all members of the industrial design program. I'm uh, Ryan Klinger. I'm Spencer Price. I'm Andrew Drake. Justin Henry. All right, um, before we could even begin to evaluate what we wanted to do for the competition, we had to orientate ourselves around what a plastic bottle was through its life cycle, physical properties, and its actual role in recycling. After that, we could begin to brainstorm um, some ideas we came up with. Well, first of all, we had to, we wanted to do something environmentally friendly, sound, and responsible. Uh, how could we give back to the community? Um, such as a bicycle. Commercial viability was something that we wanted to focus on and um, generally something that solved issues of overconsumption. And since we're product design related, we really wanted to focus on an actual product and not an idea, so we came up with green transportation. You want to go through the ideas? Uh, some of the original ideas that we were just throwing out during our uh, brainstorming session were things such as park benches that the community would be able to use, would be able to have out in a park or something, uh, different community park uh, uh, products, different water pur purification systems, uh, maybe a gutter system to collect rain, what's going on with rain collection, uh, a spaceship, you know, can't, <laughs> can't dream too big, and uh, finally, finally we decided a bicycle was probably the best option because not only does that get the recycled bottles out of the landfill, but it really gives back to the community. It's a form of green transportation. It cuts down on CO2 emissions and all other sorts of emissions from cars. And I mean, it's healthy riding around on a bicycle. Uh, this is just some of the day-to-day -day process that we had to go through. First day was really just brainstorming and bottle collection. Uh, day two, it was a bunch of trial and error of things that we were running into problems. It, we ended up not being able to build it the way we originally wanted to. Uh, the next day, we had to search for a decommissioned bike that we could recycle an old bike as well and take a few parts from it, like such as the wheels and the crankshaft that we really couldn't figure out a way of making out of plastic at the time, especially. Uh, day four, we took a little bit of break, and throughout the rest of the time, we were really just constructing the bike and filming. Uh, I'd have to say that we spent probably a total of 40 hours each on the bike throughout the 10-day process. So we put a lot, a lot of time into it. You want to talk about some of the challenges we had? Not the challenges. Oh, the challenges? Yeah. 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 Sure. yeah, I just want to make one thing clear to people who don't know about this competition is that they only had 10 days. Oh, yeah. So um, that's why they... Yeah, the, at the first day that it started was the day that you actually found out what recyclable material you'd have to use. So there was really no preparing for it or anything. It's just all of a sudden we found out that we had to use plastic bottles to make something of use. Yeah, in terms of challenges, uh, the whole competition was a pretty big challenge because we, we're not, we weren't very informed on bicycles in general. You know, we're not huge bike enthusiasts or anything like that. We obviously never made a bike before, let alone out of plastic bottles. So uh, we came into... Uh, you know, a few problems here and there, like we didn't really know how we were going to uh, secure all the joints for the frame, stuff like that. Obviously, when you're making hollow tubes, it makes it slightly difficult when it's not out of one entire mold to make all the joints work and have a functional bike. So that was one of the big problems that we faced when we were building the bike uh, and using the crankshaft to be a hub for two of the bigger joints was also a problem. That was, that was the more challenging of the joints. Okay, well in terms of our company ideal and its services, uh, what we have here is our company is dedicated to being a leader in product innovation through use of sustainable materials. Uh, we strive to provide commercially beneficial and responsible products through creative, reliable, and green solutions. Um, in terms of a plastic bicycle, uh, we chose the plastic to be polyethylene, which is the more common of all plastics that are out there in the market. Almost any plastic product that, that you come in contact with is polyethylene. So uh, when you're producing a bike in actual manufacturing, um, the idea of using a mold, uh, it reduces production and labor costs significantly as opposed to steel or aluminum uh, bicycles. And 
when, when we say that it's a completely recyclable frame, uh, a, good, a good example for reference would be when we were in the lobby of building 43, we had a tour guide who was talking about the cork uh, flooring and how when, once it's worn out to its use, uh, it can be sent back and completely recycled and put back in again. Well, that's exactly the same idea with uh, taking it a step forward with our bike, which is if it, once it's worn out its use or if it breaks, uh, it can be completely recycled and sent back to the user. Um, not to mention it's also one-eighth the weight of mild steel in comparison with other bikes. Uh, we've mentioned uh, before that it reduces CO2 emissions, obviously, because it's, it's uh, encouraging people to use bikes other than, uh, than driving their car to work or th things of that nature. Um, and, you know, like I said, recycled plastic is one of our most abundant resources. So you can't go wrong when it's so readily available and it's almost asking you to find some way to recycle it and put it to use. And uh, another quick note just to add in is that uh, it's projected that the cost of metal is about to go up significantly, which really makes plastic an ideal material to use for something like this. Exactly. Uh, our marketing plan is really just, uh, it's a recycled bicycle that could be implement, implemented in several public and community, commu excuse me, uh, commercial niches. Uh, due to the physical properties, beneficial warranties and customer incentives can be established. I mean, even here at Google, you'll have bikes laying all around campus that you can pick up and ride off. And if the bikes are offered for even cheaper due to the fact that it's made out of recycled plastic, it's just a, a great idea, I think. Uh, some of the incentives that we have are uh, corporation sponsors, such as uh, Coca-Cola, for instance, because Coca-Cola bottles end up being one of the huge problems and the source of it. And if Coca-Cola gets in on it, then they could have a Coca-Cola bike that really shows that they are down for recycling the material that they're causing such a waste of. Um, university sponsorships, uh, there's a few college campuses around that have the trust issue that they leave bikes around campus and students can ride it from one class to another. Uh, maybe even personalized designs, you could go online and pick out a design from a certain template and uh, we could ship the bike to you personally. Uh, community transportation plans, cut down on driving the car all around. Uh, we took a trip to Chicago actually last semester and I mean cabs are really expensive especially for college students. and. I mean, we were even thinking that if they had bikes laying around, that maybe you could pay a few dollars to rent and ride around all day and you return it later that night, that'd be great. Um, product warranties, like we mentioned before, due to the fact that the bikes would be pretty much completely recyclable. If it breaks, you, you send it back to us. We re-break the, the plastic down, remold it, and ship it right back to you. Uh, and then there's even possibilities for discounts, for discount awards in uh, exchange for recycled plastic. If you recycle a certain amount of plastic bottles, then you can get a discount off of a bike that you purchase. So those are just some of the plans that we have. Um, you want to talk about this, Ryan? Yeah, this is a this is a conceptualized version of a product we feel could be implemented in this in this scenario. This would be a an injection molded piece split down the middle. Like if you're looking at the top view, it would be split vertically, and the inside would um, actually contain a ribbed engineered structure. So when the injection mold would actually make the two halves, and you would plastic welded together. Um, Do you mind using the microphone? Sure, sorry. Yeah. Did you hear that or should I repeat no, that? I heard it, but okay. <laughs> It'll be easier the same time around. <laughs> yeah, so this, this is our um, second version. The, ma the majority of the bike is, uh, has the capability of being recycled. Some, um, some components that we feel might not be able to are the actual crankshaft where the pedals go through the bike and the possibility of the handlebars, just the downward pressure of a, of a rider. But other than that, we, the wheels and the frame um, all have the possibility. And we actually have a generalized quote from um, someone that does uh, high machining and injection molding. Um, the mold itself would be upwards of uh, $200,000, but the bikes themselves could be made for less than $8 per frame. So um, that puts you at uh, 1,000 bikes to to bring back that mold cost and then, and then some. And the bike is called the Recycle. So. Yeah. <laughs> and we got, we've got Google's logo on the mainframe, if you can't see it. Uh, this is just a... <laughs>
This is just another uh, rendering trying to use Google's colors. <laughs> Let you guys get a good look at it. Uh, these are some of the sponsorship opportunities that we were talking about with University and Coca-Cola. Uh, I mean, Coca-Cola could buy a bunch of these bikes and sell them on mycokerewards.com or give them away. And, I mean, not only is it great for them to say that they're recycling or whatever, but, I mean, it's great advertisement, too. If a bunch of people are riding around on Coca-Cola bikes, everyone's going to see it and want one. And then the other version is um, our uh, school logo and mascot. <laughs> And this is a surprise for for Pam and Troy. This is just a special a special thanks. I like that. Let me go grab the shirt. Sure. And uh, we just threw that together. <laughs> and we actually have made a uh, quarter scale model of what the bike frame would actually look like. Uh, this is made out of a particle wood, but of course the actual bike would be made out of uh, recycled plastic. So I'll go ahead and pass this around. Anyone have any questions? Yes? How did you make the wheels in your, well, in your prototype? How did you? In this or the one we made out of plastic bottles in the video? In this? Um, it could be a similar process where it could be two halves injection molded and uh, put together. Or um, another machining opportunity is basically CNC machining where it'll just take a tool running on a computer um, program. So they can also be made out of recycled plastic. Mm -hmm. So yes. if, if um, you had to characterize your learning curve over the 10 days, you know, innovation doesn't happen all at once. You, you know, there's trial and error, all kinds of learning. Could you give a rough, you know, hand wavy sketch of how much you learned day one, day two, day three, the day you took a break, you know, all of that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, originally, we, uh, the way we planned on doing it was taking the heat gun to the bottles and melting them together, actually. But uh, then we realized that polyethylene does not bond to itself unless it's completely shredded up and melted down to a liquid, which we didn't have the means of doing. So that was one problem. And then we talked about the joints were a problem. And, uh, and we had to do every single joint in a different way. And... Seeing that we only had 10 days, we didn't have the opportunity to figure out the best way and then go back and redo the whole thing. So, I mean, every day we learn something new and better. And if we had, I mean, obviously, we could make something a lot better now. Any thoughts on a unisex or a female version? Um, the, the one, yeah, the one downfall to the, to the uh, female bicycle is, you know, they do offer that lower central tube and... There are structural issues, um, so it would just it would have to be determined in time whether that kind of frame could be implemented. But it's definitely engineerable. He had his hand up. So polyethylene doesn't really bond to itself, you said. So this is molded in two pieces, right? Yeah. You glue it together. Uh, pl plastic's welding. Plastic welding. So you melt it and you localize by it. Yeah. Okay. So what's the total bike in a way? Um. I don't have an honest answer for you, but. Do you use any kind of fiber in it, or is it just polyethylene? Um, there's, there's two opportunities, polyethylene and polypropylene. Polypropylene is slightly more rigid. Um, there's a number of ways you can go about doing it, um, whether it's having a web structure that snaps it in place inside, or if it's strictly by plastic welding. So. There's, there's also the option of reinforced polyethylene, which other um, stronger plastics can be impregnated. Um, not definitely recycled plastics. All plastics are recyclable, but uh, polyethylene is most abundant. So. so, you guys entered this competition and, and spent your 10 days in it. Did, did you manage to apply it to your school? Did the school give you some class credit or? Did you work with any of your instructors on any of this? We learned about the competition through IDSA, which is Industrial Design Society of America. So there was a little bit of regulation and a, a specific time for us to meet up and pin up our ideas and uh, brainstorm and talk about it. So it went through the program. When you're melting down the plastic, 
what type of permissions come out of that? And are they regulated so that you're not? For, for when we did it in the video, <laughs> it, it probably wasn't it probably wasn't very safe. But, uh, for, yeah, for, I, I've never reviewed video. Um, but, but what about your, the ones that you're talking about when you're doing the bottles? Um, it'd, be, it'd be the same emissions as the recycled plastic bottles. With polyethylene? Um, it, it doesn't, we're, in what, in what sense? Like if the bike road, I'm just confused, sorry. Takes a torch to it or can't, will it melt in a high, high temperature, things like that. If, if, if a flame is applied to it, like if somebody's got a bike and they take a flame to it, then it'll eventually heat up and melt away, but uh, I mean, if it's just sitting out in the sun, nothing's going to happen to it. It's just the same as any other injection molded uh, plastic part. A lot of, a lot of uh, car components, um, bumpers, non-painted bumpers are ABS plastic, for example, and they have similar uh, heat uh, chemical properties. No. There, um, Water bottles are pretty. Yeah. That's why the, the color can fade, but... Yeah. A lot of it, I think, is the idea of making it more available. Right. I mean, because there's so many people who would love to ride bikes or or help out the environment, but they might they might not have the means to. Like, to be perfectly honest, I can't afford a, a, the bicycle that I would like to buy. But I feel like if this was in the market, I'd have. I've have it, had it, ha, I'd have it more available to me. And it would also be available to ship over, like overseas into countries that aren't exactly as privileged and don't have the opportunities to buy a bicycle. I mean, this would be a great way to, for them to have transportation place to place. Is it being so light? Is, it, is there any opportunity to make it kind of portable or collapsible or something so you can snap the parts and snap it back together? I mean, I've, I would estimate it at being 15 to 20 pounds, which would probably be at or below a standard mountain bike. As for like folding options, I'd, I don't see, right now I don't see an opportunity for it, except for the, the that it snaps to, together uh, vertically down the center. So there's just a structural issue. Do you know anything about the price, like the, the cost components to a bicycle, how much cost is frame versus uh, other components? to get a sense of whether that $8 is a, is a massive reduction from the typical... Uh, the, the main cost of a bike is usually the frame because the labor costs of it, because uh, with aluminum and everything, they have to go in there and weld every single part to, to the other parts, whereas with this, you just have to do it right down the center, which would be a lot faster. And then the other parts, like the pedals and everything, and the crankshaft, you could order those in mass if we're not producing them ourselves and get a, a highly reduced cost for it, which would be fairly cheap. The entire bike would be able to be made for well under $50. I can tell you that a foot long, maybe half inch diameter piece of aluminum would cost at least $8 in terms of the price, the rising price of aluminum right now. So, so what's stopping you guys from paying for it? Money. Or are you um, Cost issues. Yeah, cost so issues and a, college students. a little bit of uh, a little bit of engineering help for exactly um, how the interior would be engineered. So um, we can we can cover the the design aspect and the, obviously the the modeling aspect. Uh, there's a there's a computer program that allows you to test structural aspects um, through applied materials. Um, so we, we would go through that to prototype it, so you wouldn't necessarily need to make a real prototype before production. So the, the injection mold itself is the, is the main initial cost. Mm -hmm. So I'm really interested in how the innovation process works and how groups of people work together in ways that foster innovation. So I'm wondering over your 10 day intense period, if you as a team found ways to work better in dealing with the unknowns and dealing with surprises, 
did you actually you know, make progress in how your team dynamics work, your communication, anything like that that you care to comment on? I'd say so. We, we really didn't know each other before <laughs> we started this. Uh, so, and we really kind of came together and made it happen, so. Um, we, figure out, we figured out who was better at what and put them at that position and we transfer around a little bit, just doing, trying to get everything done at once with such little time. I mean, we were making the bike up until the night before that the video was due, so it was really down to the wire. Along those same lines, were there any kind of like breakthrough moments, like Eureka moments, or was it all just kind of like incremental, like, oh, maybe we uh, can Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the way we actually made the tubes was a real breakthrough moment. Um, they were really structurally sound, and I think we were all impressed, and there's a few other applications that could possibly be implemented there. Just the way when the plastic got to a certain um, temperature, it actually became really, really strong and rigid right before the point where it would actually break down um, mechanically. And we found that if you cut the Gatorade bottles a certain way, they really just snapped right into each other pretty well. <laughs> And, and uh, then after that, you know, once we layered other bottles on top of it, they just shrunk down and that added the strength, yeah. so that was... I mean, there were a lot of eureka moments when we were just really ecstatic and then five seconds later we realized that something else wasn't going to work and <laughs> <laughs> just hit another brick wall and mm -hmm. right. it was definitely a roller coaster throughout the week. Yeah, the innovation process was pretty much the whole time, I'd say. So what did it teach you about... Um, innovating and entrepreneurship like what is this process kind of fostered in your mind that you might not have thought about before that it doesn't happen in 10 days <laughs> <laughs> um we took the trip to the chicago collegiate entrepreneurs conference and that was a big um, eye-opener because we we actually sat through a business pitch competition and we never really thought about our idea as anything more than we originally thought about it. And then after that point, we realized, you know, we have an idea, we can pitch it. And then we just got motivated in an entrepreneurial sense. I mean, so. we, on that. Yeah. How you got the opportunity? Your school got behind the competition. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, App State got behind the competition and said that, uh, asked the, uh, the judges to pick a winner from Appalachian State and that they'd send the winning team on an all expense trip paid to uh, Chicago for the Collegiate Entrepreneurs meeting. And I mean, we were walking through the lobby and we're like, you know what, this bike could really turn into something. And I mean, up until the night before our flight yesterday, I was in one of the labs painting that model, trying to get it all ready. So, I mean, 10 days definitely isn't enough. We've, we've been working on it since then and we'll hopefully be able to continue onwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the whole, the whole process brought on a lot of initiative that we really hadn't explored before. You know, it's like we're sitting in class doing what we got to do, doing our projects, focusing on that, but, you know, at the same time, we can be doing these other things to further prepare us for the future, so. Yeah, I mean, in our, uh, in our studio class right now, we're actually working on a refugee design project where we have to design something for refugee camps over in Africa. And I mean, these would be cheaply made and we could ship them to, over to the refugee camps and then they'd have a faster way of getting into a town to buy something that they, they need in back or into town to, or into a, t towards a creek to pick up water for the day. Because a lot of the times they, they waste a, lot, a few hours of the day collecting water and going back and it's really dangerous for them to leave the camps and with a bike it would be a lot faster, so. You had a question there. Uh, so what are your next steps that you're going to do to get back? How do you plan to uh, take this further? Um, well, right now we're just focusing on the bike. There's only so much we can do right now. We, we need to all sit down as a team and learn the um, computer program that I was talking about that can test structural aspects and talk to some more uh, people that specialize in molds. Um, that's almost all we can do until we can take the next step, which would be to, to actually make a prototype. And we, we wrote up a, a business plan with the help of the, our entrepreneurial department. Hopefully you guys will enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone else tried to make a bike out of, out of this type of material? Yeah. Um, his name's Matt Clark, and he's, he's in Southern California. And he actually uh, developed a prototype with, he used polypropylene. 
what he didn't do was he used an existing front fork, but he did um, create the whole frame, and it was it was he wrote it. And there isn't a patent issue with him. Um, he has a he has a patent pending, a provisional patent on his design, but the way he did it, he machined his parts. And he used a four-piece frame, which was basically the two outside components and then the two inside structural components. But the way we're looking at doing at it or doing it is is to make it just two pieces and take the two outside pieces and make them one. So. Are you uh, investigating your patent option as well for you guys? Until we until we know what the mold will be. And until we know that, it's, it's just tough to say. Yeah. And uh, my older brother is actually uh, studying to be a patent lawyer at Virginia Law right now. So um, he, he's actually been a really big help to me so far. And he's more than willing to help us out and with whatever he can. So he's helping me, us out with that a little bit. Can you tell me about the, your logo, the name of your company? 212 Design uh, comes from our our. So no, it's an homage to our roots. Uh, it's 212 is our studio number at Appalachian. Yeah, room 212 in the tech building. 212, yeah. Any other questions? We're hoping you guys put this on the homepage. <laughs>